What impact do you think Muhammad Ali's death had on any of these athletes? Oh, that's a great question, and I actually think it, it had something profound. And this is really interesting to me because when Ali passed away, my first instinct as somebody who's been writing about Ali, who's known many members of his of his inner circle, and and all all of this like deep connection I feel towards Ali and his legacy, like. My first reaction was like, well, I wonder if this will just lead to a sense of relief because he has been so incapacitated for 20 years and whatnot, that maybe this is just a gentle way to say goodbye because he's really been gone for so long. But then when I went to Louisville for the funeral and I stood among the hundred thousands of people who were throwing flowers at his car as it went down Main Street in Louisville and as I spoke to so many ordinary folks in Louisville who met him and then spoke to other folks who knew Ali so well, who were there for the services that day, I I realized that I was completely wrong. And the mere fact of Ali leaving this earth seemed to shift people in a way to be like, okay, you know, we, and it was almost like the opposite of what I thought it would be like, almost like Ali being in this sort of suspended animation of Parkinson's disease, almost had people say like, well, there's Ali, he's still with us. But then the absence of Muhammad Ali from this planet the idea that Muhammad Ali no longer walks among us, the idea of that chain, that link being broken, um, I, I really do think it shifted people to say, well, someone better pick up this torch or else it's just going to die. And I felt that in Louisville, and I think that really did have had an effect on our general atmosphere. So it, I would be remiss to not think it had some effect on Michael Jordan. And then you had LeBron and uh, Carmelo. You had Dwayne Wade and uh, Chris Paul. And you had LeBron explicitly mentioned. Yeah, and you had LeBron explicitly mentioned Muhammad Ali, where and and, and explicitly speak about that idea of picking up the torch. And you know, the torch, of course, has that that bigger meaning of Muhammad Ali too, because of the courage of. And and I got to tell you, Dan, I'm sure you talked about this on your show when Ali passed, but I feel like this has gotten undersold because when I speak to disability rights activists, the courage of Muhammad Ali in 1996 to be public with his Parkinson's when he held that torch. Because I think in this era of social media where so many people blessedly, blessedly are public about whatever their, their disabilities or challenges might be, we've become a little bit uh, calloused to the idea that people were not really public about those things as recently as 1996. And I've spoken to so many people since Ali died who work on disability rights issues who just said the sight of him shaking and holding that torch was a life-changing moment for them of saying, I don't have to be ashamed. And I I really do feel like this idea of passing the torch with Ali, it has that kind of power where people don't only think of the 1960s, but they think of the 1990s, which, of course, is much more recent. So Ali, when he finally leaves his mortal coil and goes to the other side, People see that and say, my goodness, uh, we have some work to do to make sure this legacy doesn't die. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.